Hey guys, my name is Samantha if you're new to Top Dog Tips and every week I share with you some how-to videos, product reviews, comparisons. This week I'm going to tell you guys about how to house train an adult dog. If you adopt a dog from a shelter, um, sometimes they're not house trained or if you get a rescue dog, sometimes they're not house trained, especially if they have lived outside for most of their life before. Um, it's sort of like adopting a puppy and having to house train a puppy, but it's a little bit more difficult only because those bad habits have already been made to go in the house. So you have to be really careful about that. Um, the other thing is oftentimes when dogs come from shelters and rescues, they are um, not really comfortable in the house and they're not really comfortable with people. So you don't want to scare them and have any negative connotations with urinating in the house or anything like that because then you might get more behavior problems coming out of that. So um, it's a little bit more tricky than house training a puppy, but it's along the same lines. Um, usually I would recommend to take some time off if you work outside the home. Um, it's That's the best way to do it if you're adopting a dog because you need to spend that time one on one with the dog to get them used to your home and get them in a routine. A lot of house training, whether it's chewing or potty training, is going to be forming a routine. Is going to be the biggest thing for your dog to get on a schedule um, and taking time off. I, even just a few days would be really beneficial for that. So consider that if you're thinking about adopting a dog. You also, if you have an adult dog, you want to make sure there's no medical issues. Um, chances are if they've come from a shelter or rescue, they've already been checked out by a vet. If you happen to adopt a dog from somebody else that, say, needs to rehome a pet or something like that, um, and there's issues with incontinence, you might want to check with your vet just to make sure that there's nothing going on like that. Um, that can save you a huge struggle with trying to house train a dog that has some type of medical issue that's causing that. So um, you can do that. Sometimes there's behavioral issues. Uh, separation anxiety is the one that comes to mind the most for me. A lot of times dogs with separation anxiety, they are um, anxious and nervous and that's causing them to urinate in the house. Some dogs do it out of um, anger or spite. You're gone all day and they know that you are going to be home, come home to a mess. So they will be naughty when you're gone to try and get you, trying to get back at you sort of for um, being gone. So there's some behavioral issues. And if that's the case, then you're gonna need to work on some training, which isn't a big deal, but it's something completely different from what we're talking about today. Um, and what I'm talking about today is you bring in a dog, there's no medical issues, no behavioral issues, and all you want to do is train them to go to the bathroom outside. Um, you can use potty pads or you can buy those little um, like fake grass areas for your dog to go on. I don't not recommend them, but those aren't made to be an all the time thing. So keep that in mind if you want to leave them at first for your dog to have a place that they go in the house that it's easier for them and um, it's easier for you to clean up. It's not directly on your carpet or directly on your floors. Those are great products to use, but those are a short term fix for this issue. So just remember that, that you don't want to buy those and think that you're going to use those for the life of your pet. What you really need to do is start a routine. So you wanna, the first thing you wanna do is feed your dog consistently and if you're feeding and watering at the same times during the day, then he's gonna be going to the bathroom around the same times during the day. Depending on the breed of dog that you have, it's how big his um, digestive tract is, is gonna be how long it takes him to process the food. So with a smaller dog, they may eat and need to go to the bathroom an hour later, a larger breed can hold it longer. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna be gone from work all day, Either feed your dog first thing early in the morning when you get up, say you leave the house at eight and you wake up at five. Feed your dog at five, and then while you're doing things around the house and you're getting ready, everything can process, and you can take your dog out before you leave. Um, and same thing at night, don't feed them right before you go to bed or you're just asking for an accident. Feed them well before you go to bed, take them out before bedtime, and you're gonna be less apt to find an accident when you wake up in the morning. Um, so schedules are really important and consistent feedings go with that. Um, scheduling bathroom breaks can also go with that. If you have to leave your dog at home during the day, um, either in a crate or uh, free in your home, make sure that somebody, a friend, a neighbor, um, you can hire a pet sitter or a dog walker, um, they can come out and they can come into your home and let your dog out at the same times every day, maybe every couple of hours in the beginning um, until your dog gets used to holding it longer and builds that up. Um, and then maybe every four hours or so, or maybe once in the middle of the day. Um, so make sure that those bathroom times are consistent as well. With a routine um, also comes the number of times that you want to let your dog out for, during the day. When you first adopt an adult dog that's not house trained, you want to make sure that that is multiple times. Um, 
during the day, maybe every couple of hours. And then of course, as they build up, you can go longer. Um, for large breeds, you want to do it at least six times a day um, to let them out throughout the day. So that's, you know, like every maybe four hours or so your dog should be let out. That means if you're gone for eight hours or 10 hours, somewhere in the middle, your dog should have a break, whether you can come home on a lunch break or something like that. Um, or like I said, you pay a dog walker or a dog sitter um, to come in and let your dog out for a bathroom break. Smaller dogs, because their bladders are smaller, they can't hold it as long. So you maybe wanna take them out about eight times a day, which would be every three hours, maybe um, every, three hours is probably good, maybe sooner if you have a dog that, um, there are certain breeds that are more prone to uh, having accidents in the home and being hard to house train. So um, if you have one of those breeds or one of those dogs, maybe even sooner uh, than that, maybe every two hours. And that's something that you need to consider when adopting the dog is, is budgeting in for that um, dog walker or pet sitter to come and help you or um, working your work schedule around so that you'll be able to let your dog out. Um, and the other part of starting a routine, sorry, that would be Sadie. And if you guys have watched my videos before, you know our crazy chocolate lab Sadie. Um, so anyway, another part of that routine is to take your dog always in the same spot when you go outside, just at least in the beginning. Um, and they'll get used to the smell of that. And that area is for going to the bathroom. And then they'll smell it every time they go out. And they'll be more apt to go um, for you when you go outside. And then, of course, as they get used to going outside, you can let them roam around a little bit more and have some more space. But especially if you live in an urban area where um, you're walking outside and there's so many different smells and distractions. Um, when you're rural like we are, our dogs stay in our yard and kind of roam around and they, they have areas that I notice where they go to the bathroom more than others. Um, but if you're in an urban area, maybe go to the same dog park every time or go to the same um, you know, street, walk the same paths and things like that. Um, and that can help build that routine too. When your dog goes inside, do not discipline them and yell at them and stick their nose in it. That's what everybody says, stick their nose in it, holler at them, spank their butt, whatever you do to discipline them. Um, the problem with that is that you're associating that negativity with an accident that they've had of going to the bathroom. So then they become scared of going to the bathroom. They might become scared of you as well and lose trust in you as an owner. So that's something that you don't wanna do. Um, when they're going to the bathroom, discipline them when you catch them in the act. And you don't actually wanna like spank them or yell at them when they're in the act, but do something to startle them so that they stop going. Um, one of the things that I always use is clapping your hands. If you clap your hands loud, it'll startle the dog. They'll stop going and then you can say, no, we don't go in the house and you pick them up, take them outside and they'll finish going out there and then that gets, um, you know, they start understanding that it's not okay to go inside, it is okay to go outside and that's um, easy enough. If they do go in the house, I cannot stress enough how important it is to thoroughly clean the area. Dog urine has obviously a scent that we can smell when they first go, but it also has a scent that we can't smell. So if you think you've cleaned the spot, it's soaked down through your carpet, it's soaked into the um, padding underneath. If they urinate on a chair or um, furniture, it's soaked into the cushion. And just because you can't smell it anymore, your dog can't. There are special products on the market that you can buy that um, will remove that urine smell. They're a little bit more expensive than regular cleaners, but they have special enzymes in them that break down the, the urine and really draw that smell out so your dog's not as apt to mark the same place twice. And that's what happens when they can smell the smell or if they can smell the smell of another dog. If you have one dog that's not house trained and then you adopt a second dog that comes in and urinates on your furniture or on your carpets, your first dog may start doing it too just to mark those areas and you'll have a major problem. So um, spend the extra money and buy that stuff. I highly uh, recommend that thoroughly cleaning. Um, and the other thing that you want to do, which is something that all dog owners should do, whether you have a puppy or an adult dog, observe your dog, spend time with them. You'll notice the signs when they need to go out. Some dogs go close to the door. Some dogs start sniffing around for a spot. A little bit of time observing your dog, you're going to figure out what those signs are and you'll figure out when he wants to go out and what he's looking to do. Um, and it'll be easy to tell what those are. So um, spend some time, observe, look at those signs, make sure you know, your favorite show's on, you don't want to get up, it doesn't matter, it's in the middle of the night, you don't want to get up, you hear your dog pacing around, we had a pacer, that's why I bring that up, um, actually our chocolate lab, Sadie used to pace in the middle of the night and I could hear her walking on the floor and that's how I always knew and as badly as I wanted to stay in bed, 
you need to get up and let your dog out because if they have an accident just because you're lazy, then that's your fault, not their fault. So um, watch for the signs, form a routine, and you guys will have no problem house training your dog. If you do have any questions about house training an adult dog, I do have a video coming up in a few weeks about house training a puppy. Um, like I said, it's similar, but it is a little bit different. So if you have any questions about house training, feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, you can find me on our website, and my contact information is there. It's topdogtips.com. We're on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Uh, we're on Instagram, and of course on our YouTube channel. This might be how you're watching it right now. Um, follow us on social media or you can subscribe to our newsletter on our website and you'll be up to date with all my latest how-to videos, product reviews, and all that good stuff that we share every week. So um, keep that in mind and of course any questions, if you guys have a how-to video that you are looking for that you can't find on our site, um, send that to me. Any kind of videos that you want to see that you can't find, I'd be happy to help you guys out with that. So I hope you enjoyed this video about how to hit how to house train an adult dog, and I'll see you guys later this week with another great how-to. Thanks.